Sydney Harbour, the gateway to Australia. A sunburned country haunted by ghosts of a violent past. Absolutely amazing. Drawing international paranormal investigator Rob Demarest to its shores. Ghost hunting dream come true. To meet his crack team of ghost hunters. I want to welcome all of you to the Haunting Australia team. When I came here five years ago down under, I was amazed by the amount of paranormal activity that I experienced and witnessed, especially considering this is a pretty new country in terms of Western history. So what I would like to do now is combine the six of us with all different talents to see if we can unlock the paranormal mysteries of Australia. The first mission to investigate the haunting of an age-old academy in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, marred by tragic history, and where visitors today report encounters with residents of yesteryear. Tonight on Haunting Australia. Hello. The White Lady is only one of many restless spirits set to roam Woodford Academy. Come out and show yourself to me. With over 200 years of stories, the oldest standing structure in the mountains oh, oh. <gasps> is allegedly its most haunted. I've just been touched then. The first chilling challenge for the Haunting Australia team. From the UK, psychic bad boy Ian Lawman, medium and ordained exorcist. There's blood in here. There's a lot of blood. And old school supernatural sleuth Ray Jordan. Touch me, affect me. Let us know that you're here. From India, ghost hunter and metaphysicist Gaurav Tiwari. Come out and show yourself to me. From Australia, accomplished paranormal researcher Alan Tiller. He just kind of went like that and he was gone. And medium clairvoyant Raylene Cable. There is definitely a female presence in this room. From the US, internationally renowned lead investigator Rob Demarest. I've been investigating the paranormal for over 20 years. You name it, I've hunted it. And I believe this team has what it takes to find out what's haunting down under. West of Sydney, New South Wales, the Blue Mountains loom ominously. To the English settler, a daunting barrier to lands beyond. To the indigenous inhabitant, a place of fear and mystery. Steeped in myth and history, it's said to be one of Australia's most haunted regions. And perched in the brush, purportedly teeming with spirit activity, the notorious Woodford Academy for Boys. Previously a pub, a gentleman's residence, and a sanatorium. Within its creaky walls, 12 restless spirits are said to reside. Six good ones and six bad ones. The hauntings date back to a mysterious death in 1835, when ex-convict bootlegger William James, plying his trade from a sly grog shop, faced financial ruin, and his wife Mary was found hanging from a noose. She was in postnatal depression and they were poor and they had children. So she hung herself. Or did she? Reports state James was tried for his wife's murder but acquitted, after which he mysteriously vanished. And Mary James's ghost became the first of what's known as Woodford's Dismal Dozen. I felt an energy come through the doorway and I looked up and I saw the dark shadow of a man. 
there was a dark shape that was standing on my shoulder, a knee on my shoulder. I can't describe him, but I know it was a gentleman. Within Woodford's walls, the spirits seem to have free reign. The sun goes down, the shadows grow longer and more sinister. Lights inside are extinguished and the team enters in pitch darkness. In Woodford's rickety rooms, CCTV cameras lead back to Surveillance Central. Let the ghostly games begin. On a solo psychic mission, medium Ian Lawman is first to enter the inky void, a high-definition micro-camera rig strapped to his body. Hello? At Surveillance Central, team members closely monitor his progress. OK, I'm just walking now into what appears to be a hallway. Um, I can see rooms to my right, another what appears to be a very creepy looking sitting room. Oddly, Ian is not drawn to one of the many period oh. rooms, but a renovated bathroom. Whoa. Um, <clears throat> as soon as I come to this um, area in front of me, there's a really overpowering um, sadness, really, really sad. I can't understand what the room is yet, and it's almost as if I need to um, com compose myself before I enter the room. Um, I want to go in there, and then there's something pushing me back out, but I'm going to try and go in. I have all three abilities, clairvoyance, which means I can see the future, a medium who can talk to the dead, and psychic who can do here and now. I started seeing spirit at the age of three. It wasn't until I was 15 until I realised that I could speak to the dead, so it was really 15, 16 when I knew I was a medium. Psychic was something I developed once I started connection with the spiritual church. They showed me how to control that, how to use that. My background started uh, as a dancer, so I went to the Academy of Ballet and then I started going into bare knuckle boxing, which I had 28 fights and lost one. Um, so, so that was a really huge success. And I realised I lost the last fight and I thought this could be a downer, so I thought I need to walk away. And I started doing um, tarot readings to earn a living and uh, then the rest is history, really. Ooh, shit, OK. The old bathroom was once a bedroom. I took a group of Dorog Aboriginals around and they were petrified. I'm just half expecting somebody to jump out behind there. One of them said to me, what is behind that door? And I said, why? And she said, whatever it is, it's evil. It's incredibly evil and should be locked up in there. Whoa, there's, um, holy shit. There's this really overpowering energy coming in now. Sensing psychic heat, Raylene Cable also enters the dark building, heading upstairs to another supposed center of activity, the attic. This area of, of the academy was always a nice area. I just feel this is, there was a lot of sadness. My specialized area is mediumship, um, but I'm also a clairvoyant. At the age of two, my mother realised I had a gift. She would take me, to, I used to always say, get the man out of my ear. She took me to a child psychologist to make sure there was nothing wrong with me and um, everything showed up clear, but uh, it's never gone away. As a medium, uh, to best describe what I see is in a ghost is often I will see the silhouette of a person. Sometimes I will see what they once wore. Often I will actually feel before I see and then I start to hear. I've got a little girl with me, actually. Wow. I think it might be Jessie McManamy upstairs. Jessie McManamy was the daughter of John McManamy, who established the boarding school in 1907. Jessie wasn't mentally well. From what I could make out, she was schizophrenic. So they used to lock her up there. Well, I'm drawn to looking out the window. I want to look out the window um, as though I'm looking out, but I, I'm looking out, but I can't get out. And she used to tap on the front window. I'm just going to keep walking and, and, and come back because this little girl seems to be 
she was... Oh, I want to go back in. I can hear her saying, I'm in here, but I don't know if this was her room. And I see her to be quite, only quite young, maybe seven or eight. I, I see blonde hair, actually blonde hair. Okay, the room um, doesn't feel right, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm coming very, very close, very emotional. Um, oh, dear me. There were about six of us, so I opened the door and we went in. One of them said she had a baby on her hip and she said, I've got to get out of here. Tell me what it is, tell me. And I said, I can't tell you other than someone committed suicide in here. I, I got this sensation <clears throat> that I need to clear my throat, like there's something around my throat. She said it's very, very evil. Either somebody's um, taken their own life by a hanging or, or there's been a strangulation because my throat is really, really burning now and I can feel this. It is a, it is a, um, a hanging of some sort. There is a rope around my neck. This is a room that the little girl, the little fair-haired girl, keeps drawing me back in here. This may have been her bedroom at some point, and I'm getting a yes as I say that. Her bedroom at some point. I really, really feel emotional now. This to me is like a punishment area of some sort. I feel like this area here has been an area that's... Um... Energy that does remain has an unhappy beginning. And Jessie was not happy and she died here. I just feel like I'm taking on her emotion and I don't really want to, to be honest. What was that? Can you hear that? Oh my God. I just could hear like a hostess trolley with glasses on it. Is anybody there? There's somebody out there. Not only is the interior of Woodford Academy supposedly haunted, outside, the garden is also said to play host to a resident spirit. This is where witnesses have reported the apparition of tragic Mary James. She was just there. This encounter actually happened about nine or ten years ago and I came out here with my grandmother, joined in on a tour. I kind of slipped away from the crowd a little bit and I saw this beautiful lady who had long dark brown hair and she was dressed in a very olden style nightgown. I thought, oh my god, what have I just seen? She made eye contact with me and then I actually watched her slowly just turn around and walk into the bush and as she would walk she'd just slowly disappear into nothing. Believing they can make contact with Mary, Ray and Gaurav head out to the dark, chilly garden. So Gaurav, we're gonna head down towards the end of the garden. The apparition has also been seen around this area. Let's see what we capture. I'm calling out to the spirit of Mary James. If you're here with us, please talk to me, give me a sign. In a former life, I've been working for one of the world's largest telecommunication companies. I've worked as an airline steward, chicken or beef. But more recently, I was working as a personal banker. I actually gave that job up to be here. I got interested in the paranormal when I was five years old. We used to spend our summer holidays at my grandfather's house. The bottom level was the basement cellar area. So my cousin and I, we used to have a mirror. So we used to place the mirror on top of a, a box. We had a candle, which at that time we weren't supposed to be using. And we used to look into the mirror to see whether we could see spirits looking back at us. We know now that that was called scrying, which is a method that, that ghost hunters and mediums actually use to communicate with spirit. If you're the apparition of the white lady that's been seen and been validated. Ray uses a digital recorder to try and capture what's known as EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. Gorav is armed with a full spectrum stills camera, which sees far more than the human eye. The human eye only sees in a certain variance. 
whereas a full spectrum is everything. We see a certain amount of colour. On the left hand side we have UV and on the right hand side we have IR. So what the full spectrum camera does is it expands on the human eye. So you start seeing in light that as a human we can't see it all. Can you please show yourself to us in the pictures? Show us your hair. Is anybody there? There's somebody out there. It's there again as soon as you start walking. Hello? Out there. Did you hear that? Hello? Oh! Mannequin, mannequin, mannequin. I hate mannequins. Oh, hey. That was intense. Oh, I've never, ever, ever felt like that. I can have a cuddle. Yeah, why? What was the matter? Are you trapped here? We want to know more about you. What happened with you? We can offer you some help if you want, if you can show yourself to us in the pictures. If you're not afraid of leaving people, come out and show yourself to me. Give me a sign, Mary. I know you're there. As the elements put the wind up ray, Gaurav spots an anomaly on a digital photograph. I think so. I captured something here. Yeah? I'm not sure what it is. But let's analyze it. To review their efforts, the frozen ghost hunters rush to the warmth of Surveillance Central. Oh, I can't believe how cold it is out there. Right, these are the photos you've taken, so why don't you... Yeah, I think I've That's got really something cool. interesting. Can you stop a second? Yeah. Go, 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 go back. I see something. After the break, has the ghost of the White Lady finally been captured on camera? And later on Haunting Australia, oh. panic in the attic. Go, 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 go. I could see. It was so quick. The Haunting Australia team is spending the night at historic Woodford Academy in the bitter cold of the Blue Mountains. Some say that at least a dozen ghosts could stalk this 200-year-old building. If you're not afraid of leaving people, come out and show yourself to me. Gaurav has been trying to capture an image of the White Lady, Mary James, an original tenant of the property, found hanging from a noose in 1835. Touch me, affect me. To examine his shots, he has returned to Surveillance Central with Ray. Full spectrum stills cameras like Gorav's are popular amongst ghost hunters. What's that there? Due to the fact that they read infrared and ultraviolet as well as standard light. Does that not look like a face? You know, Ray, it could be our mind playing tricks. It could be matrixing. Matrixing is a human tendency or tendency of human mind to find a familiar shape out of complex images. If it is a face, it's quite a smiling face. Looks like a happy ghost. Dismissing this image as a trick of the eye, Gorav moves on and thinks he's hit pay dirt. Stop a second. Yeah. Go, 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 go back. See something. Now, wow. look at that. Look. Look at this. Can you zoom in a second? Yes. Two eyes. Two eyes, I can see the nose. Nose. The hair. The hairline. There goes your hand. Definitely a hand movement there. Almost going like that. Yeah. Can you zoom back out again? Wow. Zoom back out again. Gorav's supernatural snap portrays the hazy image of a female face. Could it be an apparition of Mary James, the lady in white? This is the place where I was provoking Mary James, and then I took this picture. We've caught something there. Yes, impressive. Good job. Very impressive.
Some visitors to the academy claim to have been pushed and shoved by small invisible hands. Could it be the supposedly mischievous spirit of Jesse McManamy, daughter of the school founder, John McManamy? She hated the school. Her father was the schoolmaster. He was strict. He was deeply religious. And I think he ruled with a rod of iron. She has pushed people. And she actually pushed one person down the stairs. Or does this alleged activity relate to former pupils of the boys' boarding school. Either way, the victims have one thing in common. All of them, almost to a person, have been teachers. This happens mostly to school teachers. They get pushed. As it happens, in his previous career, team leader Rob Demarest was a school teacher. Will Rob suffer pushback from the spirited students of Woodford? I worked at a number of locations. I worked at very high-end boarding schools. I also worked at lockdown facilities for troubled kids where I was a restraint trainer. So I think in some situations I could try and be a really nice, helpful guy, and others I had to be a strict disciplinarian. Rob and Raylene are working in complete darkness like this. Only we can see what's happening around them on an infrared camera. This is a device that I worked on. It's a natural EMF meter that measures. Well, before we were able to even get too far into that, um, something knocked twice on the door, it starts pushing the door open. Is there nobody behind that door? You gotta be kidding me. There's gotta be someone behind that door. I open the door. And there's no one there. There's no one hiding in the hallway. I'm telling you, there's, there's no one there. Did you guys see that? Did you hear it? Something just knocked on the door. I'm going to close this nice and tight this time. Somebody was late for class. That's amazing. That's incredible. OK, so now, apparently, our student may have joined us. So let's get right underway. You know, first of all, I was actually a teacher for, for a number of years. So I just want you to know that I try and be a fair, kind, nice teacher. Um, were you a student here? If this is a student that we're talking to. Is that your stomach? Yeah. You didn't hear that? I heard it, but it wasn't my stomach. Go ahead. I just keep getting the nice Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. But whilst being in there, I did get um, a little cheeky boy by the name of Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, if you want to play around, it's OK. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not Raylene. I can't see you. So Johnny, if you're here, how can you let me know? What we're trying to do is record your voice. You see that big old clunky voice recorder on the tape? <laughs> Whoever's there, you can come on in. Just push the door open. Decide to challenge this, this potential little boy spirit. You know, come on in. If you want to be acknowledged, you got come on, come in. I will acknowledge you, all right, because I just made sure that door is real tightly shut. So if you can open that door now, we, we got something. Bam. We got a big noise from the door. Raylene jumps. <laughs> I get chills. You gonna do it again? And I guess waited by that door. You know, there's that moment sometimes. There's that moment where you think if I could just open the door at the right second, Right at the right moment, there's going to be a full apparition, a full ghost standing right there. Nobody. So I'm just going to keep waiting and keep hoping that I'm going to see that little boy ghost tonight. Moments after Rob believes he had a run in with Johnny the cheeky schoolboy. An alarm is triggered nearby. 
Puzzlingly, all alarms were disabled prior to filming. I mean, it's going off right now. But what set it off? After the break, the fire brigade has arrived, but there's no smoke in sight. It was very weird having three detectors activated, uh, and two of them while we were there. And later, has our team made direct contact with the other side? After Rob suspected a spirit was lurking in the corridor, the Woodford fire alarm inexplicably sounded. I mean, it's going off right now. This is completely baffling, since the alarm system was deactivated prior to filming. The call, nevertheless, went through to the local Lawson Fire Brigade, which arrives promptly. Even though it's a false alarm, the fire chief is not annoyed. He's seen this before. There's something strange that occurs here from time to time and sets off the automatic fire alarm. This time, a sensor in the academy's roof space went off. So we'll need to get the ladder and get up there and ha have a look. We might put you up the ladder. When one of the firemen were actually in the roof space, uh, looking at one of the detectors, the adjoining detector, that actually activated. Uh, he went over to that. I was up in the roof space at the, at the same time, sort of partially in that area. And while he was over there at that one, uh, the one on the other side activated. And there was no reason for that. But it was very weird having three detectors activated uh, and two of them while we were there. Activity in the roof is not uncommon. In fact, the haunting of Woodford Academy reveals a slew of uncanny encounters occurring upstairs. The attic rooms, without doubt, that is the most important area of the house. Earlier, Raylene felt the presence of a young girl. I've got a little girl with me, actually. Wow. Ian suspects he had a brush with the same spirit. You touched? I thought you did it, actually. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> OK, I've just been touched then. But a more malicious presence is also reported at the top of the stairs. The dark shape moved from the very, very corner of the room. And I had a feeling that there was something there, but I couldn't see it and then it shot out, raced past me and went down the stairs and was just gone in a second. People are scared of the attic because there are so many written stories about people not being able to breathe, the floor moving, people on the stairs. The, the stairs seem to, seem to be a main focus of experiences in this house, but then they lead up to the attic, so. Maybe it's just an overspill. In the early hours of the morning, Rob and Ray ascend to the attic. We know so far this evening there's been a large amount of activity involving people being touched, people hearing footsteps. What we want to do is make sure that we're doing our best to document that. So we're using a number of pieces of equipment. Rob sets up an arsenal of ghost hunting gear, a digital recorder to catch EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon, a tri-field meter to gauge changes in the electromagnetic flux, an industrial strength thermometer. If the heat goes up, turns red. If the heat goes down, turns blue. And on the floor, a static detector. So if anything starts crossing the floor to get close to you, that'll change color. His trigger object, no less than fellow investigator Ray Jordan and essentially using Ray as bait. To tell you the truth, Ray, we're talking human guinea pig time. Rob's planning to leave Ray alone, upstairs in the dark. Other team members will monitor his progress on surveillance cameras. He seems, um, seems a little nervous. Yeah, he seems very nervous in that room, yeah. 
you know, he is a genuinely nice guy. So we're hoping that a spirit up here who's in pain, who's sad, will be drawn to Ray. And this time we'll be able to make sure that we can document it. You relax or try. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see what we get. All right. So with that being said, Ray, all you. Thank you. If there's any spirits present in the room with me, I invite you to come forward. Make yourself known to me. What we want to have happen is Ray be able to get clear evidence that something paranormal is actually happening up here in the attic. Earlier, accompanied by Raylene, Ian was disturbed by what he felt to be a presence in a balcony bedroom. I actually don't want to be in here right now. Now, stealing his psychic courage, Ian returns. I think if you set your camera up in this one... Gorav joins him with hopes of finding photographic evidence of the spirit. But the supposed ghost may have other ideas. Are you trying to show us your sign? That's okay. We started hearing footsteps and different kind of sounds in the room. So we thought there is someone trying to give, give us some response. Or is it just the wind? If there's anybody here who would like to talk to us, could you just give us a sign? Could you show yourself? We want you to give us a sign. Do you want to go further up? Yes, we shall go. Do you need any help from living people? Can you make that sound again to let us know that it was you? Mm. She's connecting with you. The strange thing was, is when we communicated, the window was tapping out um, answers. Can you show yourself to us? I'm clicking pictures, and I want to really see you. If you could please show yourself to us. Could you maybe make a noise in the room next to us? Are you a male or a female? One for male, two for female. Two. Yeah. So you're female. So that was quite convincing to us. We felt there's something going on there. We'd like to take a picture of you. If you're going to stand near the window, could you bang twice for me? We tried establishing communication with someone. Ian felt there is a stressed young lady there. We would leave now if you don't need any help. We wish you that you rest in peace and move on in life. Ever considerate of ghostly feelings, Gorav brings the session to a close. Spirits do not want to harm living people. All they need is an attention or sometimes a guidance which could help them move on. Bless you. Creeped out by a disconcerting presence in the attic, Ray has retreated to the safety of the ground floor. I have to say, I am nervous. Does he have the nerve to head back up? Come on, Ray. Go up the stairs. I think he'll go. Ah, no. no. He decides to investigate downstairs and soon regrets it. Keep going forward again. Whoa, creaky boards. Thought I saw someone sitting in the chair, but... Has the presence he sensed followed him? I don't know if you can see it behind me. Oh, it was just a chair. Oh, God. My heart is racing. 
Christ. Okay. Walking around on my own. Um, oh, I'm, I'm tongue tied. My heart was beating, but it felt completely different upstairs to, to earlier on. And uh, yeah. Despite Ray's nerve wracking experience, Raylene heads back upstairs alone. Earlier, she claimed to have channeled a young female spirit. Now she's determined to reconnect. Despite her awareness of the attic's allegedly malignant resident. Oh, wow. Go, 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 go. After the break, what sent Raylene fleeing into the night? The team of ghost hunters has spent a long night pursuing the alleged dozen dead inhabitants of Woodford Academy. A most disturbing place. Ian felt a grim presence in the downstairs bathroom. There's somebody out there. Hello? And was in for another shot in the attic. OK, I've just been touched then. Gaurav believes he photographed a ghost in the garden. We've caught something there. Yes, impressive. Whereas Rob feels a mischievous spirit was messing with him. So if you can open that door now, we got something. <gasps> then, was it communication from the other side? It's a window. But it's team medium Rain who's had the fright of the night. Oh, oh. Go, 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 go. Gallant Gorav rushes to Raylene's rescue. Raylene, are you okay? I went to sit down and I could see a, a male sh shadow. He scared me, he scared me. It's like he wanted to scare me. The shadow person described by Raylene is uncannily similar to that reported by witness Nora McGee. The dark shape moved from the very, very corner of the room and I had a feeling that there was something there, but I couldn't see it. And then it shot out. I think he wanted me to run. I don't know what would have happened if I would have st stayed. It's just bad. <laughs> these were really physical, kind of nasty things that happened to these people. And for some reason, that energy just seems to stay there. And that's what we're picking up as, as investigators. We're picking up on those um, negative impacts that happen to those people. An ordained minister of a metaphysical church, Gorav is qualified to cleanse victims of spiritual distress. What do you feel? I'm still very shaken. All right, yeah. just look into my eyes. Keep Gorav on. does bring in a beautiful cultural aspect and I think it's great for the team. It's a nice little balance. Take a deep breath, exhale, Relax, close your eyes. <laughs> Accompanied by Gorav, Raylene returns to the scene of her scare. I, I, I to sit down as, as like I saw a head. I know you're here. I just want you to relax. Gorav has resolved to relieve the academy of some psychic stress. I'm going to open the doors to the outer world for you. If you're trapped here, let me help you. If a spirit believes that he cannot move out of a place, he gets stuck there. He employs smudging, the Native American purification rite of burning bundled herbs, along with an ancient universal chant. Oh, move 
out, go to the beautiful world. This will open the door for you. You're free to move on. You've got all the energy to move on now. Ooh. As the alleged ghosts of Woodford settle, the team brings their investigation to a close. Ooh. Paranormal investigation is both exhaustive and exhausting. We have set up a very rigorous schedule for ourselves. Before they start their evidence analysis, our ghost hunters need a break. So the Haunting Australia team hops aboard Segways to go sightseeing. We want to see Australia too. A lot of people have never seen this country before. So we're getting that time off and doing something fun at the same time. Of course, exploring a bush trail aboard a contraption designed for city transport is a bit unorthodox. It's fun. It's cool. Just like riding a horse. <laughs> but the ride seems to be going smoothly until... Foster, foster. Yeah! Yeah! Oh. Shit. Gorav learns the difference between a horse and a self-balancing two-wheeler. And, as it turns out, his fall may be worse than it first appeared. No, it actually seems like it might be quite serious. It seems like he's hurt his leg pretty hard. Looks like he's on his way to hospital. Hopefully it won't affect Garav's ability to do any investigations as such, but obviously we're on our feet quite a lot of the time through the investigations, so uh, there might be a couple of aches and pains during the night. But what steered Gorav off course? At one point, I, I thought I saw a Yowie in front of Garav, and I thought that might be what he was trying to avoid. It was actually Alan. Um, so there was some confusion with that. I, I'm going to review the tape and see what we have. The Yowie is Australia's answer to Bigfoot, a huge, hairy biped alleged to stalk bushy areas, most often sighted in the Blue Mountains. Do you think it looks like Alan? <laughs> Taking the piss? No. So what, what sort of size is it? Um, probably my size. <laughs> my no kidding. So it is you. It is yeah. me. The team don't spot any other Yowies on their trek, but they are taken in by the impressive views. So here we have the Jameson Valley. It's Mount Solitary in the background. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, awesome. Breathtaking, we would use in England. Epic. Of course, the primary aim of a ghost hunt is to view evidence. The Blue Mountains boasts sites both ghostly and historic. Among them, the Mount Victoria Public Hall, reconverted into a movie theater where the team now convenes. Rob! Oh, welcome, guys. Hey. Welcome to you. How goes They're relieved to see Gorav released from hospital, but still awaiting test results. The strongest piece of new evidence is put forward by Ray Jordan. Reviewing the tapes from his solo ground floor investigation, Ray discovers a very clear EVP, or electronic voice phenomenon. Wow. OK. That's impressive. That, Great that's work. A, yeah. Well done, Ray. The really good thing about our EVPs is they've verified exactly what they're predicting is happening, and then you have the EVP that, that matches what they're saying is going on. And I don't think that's ever been done on television before. What we have here is an absolute fantastic example for me of a Class A EVP. Oh. OK. A Class A EVP is clearly audible without enhancement or amplification. It is considered a holy grail of ghost hunting. That's nuts. I, I, I guess, let's play it again here. This is incredible. Who in that house would be in pain? This inexplicable voice was recorded near the very spot Ian Lawman channeled a mysterious death, the downstairs bathroom. You walk left into the bathroom, so that wall backs onto the bathroom, and that's where the pain is. So that's the pain room. This is where a Woodford worker tragically took his own life by hanging himself. 
I think the house is holding that pain. So, so, so it could be an entity just shouting pain to let you know. This death eerily echoes that of Mary James, found hanged in 1835 behind the academy and still alleged to stalk its grounds as the ghost of the White Lady, one of the many permanent residents of Woodford Academy. Woodford Academy was very impressive. We got a good mix of technical evidence and psychic impressions, and that's what we're really looking for here. Not only we could revive the history, but we could also find some compelling evidence that says this place is very active. Um, initially, um, when I walked in, I thought, oh, it's going to be one of those buildings that looks amazing, nothing there. But instantly, I was in there and bang. I do believe Woodford Academy is actually very active. 